also a rhinestone bodice applique from Rhinestone Temple. It's a newer company, and when I tell you, they are awesome. They have a great selection. You can customize the color of the crystals. This piece is so beautiful. The video doesn't even do it justice. Their shipping is good. Their communication is great. So I just had to throw that out there. You guys, um, check them out on Instagram. But yeah, let's go on ahead and get started. So first, you want to take your bodice applique. It will come on some type of mesh, usually an illusion mesh or a strong tool. You want to flip it over. Now y'all know I love this tool for cutting out my um, lace applique. So of course I'm going to use that to do this as well. It's so much faster. But you just want to make sure your precision is on point because you do not want to disrupt these threads because then things may start unraveling. So don't go too close, go close enough, but. This is what we ended up with. Gorgeous. So now what I'm gonna do is take this and I'm going to pin it to my bodice. to start placing pins down here, trying to make sure that I'm not grabbing my dress form underneath. Now, okay, this is one issue you'll probably run into with these large pieces like this. You see how when I pull this, this is still pulled up on the side. Sometimes you can kind of 
sew it down, but if you ever have an issue to where you can't perform it to the bottom, just clip. Like I would clip this uh, mesh right here, lay that down, and then pull this how I need it to be. When you do that though, make sure that you're not clipping the thread on the inside. So you would clip an area that's just the mesh though. It looks like I'm not gonna have to do that. It looks like I could just kind of contort it to get it the way I need it to be. So I'm going to speak through the rest of my pen, guys. is I'm going to measure in between just to make sure that it is even and three and a half. Please be even so I don't have to, I probably should have been this a little over three and a half so that's fine. And it's probably just because I don't have to play it over. Yep, because that fixed it. Oh good, we're even. So if you have a mannequin, and let me say this, the difference between a mannequin and a dress form is a mannequin does not have padding or cloth over it. It's just like what you see in the stores, uh, plastic or porcelain or whatever they use for it. Um, if you have one of those, I recommend putting it on that if it's the same size as your client. If not, I like putting mine on here just to make sure I get it pinned right because this is her exact size. I am going to start sewing on here, but I'm going to do my little method where I use a piece of cardstock or something similar and just stick it underneath and so because that's pretty easy as well. And then when I feel like I got it on here pretty good, then I'm gonna transfer it. Because I really do want to keep this plus curve, so I'm probably gonna do that up until about right here. And then I'm gonna move it on over. So I'm gonna take one of my babies. Um, my cameraman is sucking right now. Like, <laughs> I, so I'm gonna take one of my baby's little cards because they are pretty thick. And I'm going to slide it up in here. Oh, I forgot I got the pinch right in. You want to take all your pins that are pinched right in. And do this. Okay, so I guess I'll start. I just want to start on this side. You're making me look bad. Get away from me. She's making me look bad. So for the top part above the waist, I have this illusion mesh and I usually use this braid on it because it matches um, the fabric and skin tones. So I might use this for the top half for my hand sewing since I'm just sewing onto the mesh. And then I may use this or probably a darker color pink or blush or whatever for the bottom. Let me see. So you're gonna to wanna to thread your needles. I use sharps and I use the largest ones that come in the pack. Sharps are so much easier to go through the fabrics and stuff. Here's a quick tip to you guys. Okay, if you are sewing a applique and you wanna cut it up into pieces, what you can do is when you have it flipped upside down, you can put glue on the threads. Like say if I want to cut this piece out from the top, I would glue everything along the threads up in here and glue everything along the threads right here. So when I separate them, they won't unravel. So that's just a little quick tip for you guys. Um, honestly, I wouldn't cut one out that's this spread out. Like it's a lot of spaces in here. Um, and I feel like you would probably be able to see the glue, but if you really take your time, you probably wouldn't. I just personally would do it. So I'm going to start behind the cluster of beads. Oh, I always get caught in the beads. I'm going to start behind like a thick cluster of beads so you won't see my knot. 
in the back and so it won't slide through like that. But you know, keep trying until you get lucky. You know what? I should have used the hair needle, but I don't know where one is. Y'all know I told y'all about the hair needle. Sometimes you can use those with curve needles. Kind of zoom in, like come in, so you can see what I'm doing. So they can see what I'm doing. Uh, like not zoom in, like literally move your feet in. I thought you was a TV producer. You said this junk suck. Okay, so you see it's here. Cool. So, like I said, I started behind a cluster B, so my knot wouldn't come through. I'm gonna just sew along. And you can also, um, I just realized this is the exact same color thread as the threads that they used on these. So, yeah, I just look at the back and see what color threads they use and just get that one and use. So that's what I'm doing. I like to kind of go around when I'm at the edge. I like to go on the outside beads. Crystals on me. So like how I'm, I'm inside right here and then I'm taking it around. That way they won't be flopping so much, flopping back and forth. And I'm not even gonna lie, y'all, this is really time consuming. But it's like once you get going, it's eh, once you get a roll along it, it's just it doesn't seem like it takes as long. And you guys every now and then just tie you a knot, a good knot. Just in case your stitches come out. You won't have to worry about all of them coming out. And the same way you back stitch on a machine, I would recommend back stitching on your bodice appliques every now and then as well. So see how I tie my knot? Then I'm gonna go back a little bit and kind of overlap what I just did. A common problem when you're sewing stuff like this is your thread getting caught on the prongs below. If you have that problem, all you have to do is you can either take a piece of paper and pin it or take some fabric and pin it over the part that you're not doing. So your thread will just glide right off of it and it won't be snagged. guys when you get to a spot like right here um i don't like really taking the thread across the mesh if i don't have to i try to kind of keep it hidden behind stone so i'm gonna take it down until i get to a part where they're closer together and then i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna go up And that's just me, that's just what I like to do because I'm a ultra perfectionist. I 
I um, took it off my dress form and I am simply cutting the mesh off kind of close to these, but not too close. Just because I did not like how it looked, it kind of blocks out my shine of my glitter stone behind it. So as you can see, that looks so much better when it lays on it right here as opposed to right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that for each of these and then I'm going to place them and I'm going to sew them down. So I'm going to fast forward through this part. Okay, so look, guys, I sewed all of these on. Now I'm just going to go up under the mesh, making sure I'm not catching any of my threads. Hi, babe. And I'm just going to cut up. Okay, babe, wait. So yes, that was so much better than trying to cut it first and then sew on. So I make the mistake so y'all don't have to. So I'm gonna do that for all of these and then I'm gonna go and do the other side. Okay guys, so this is the final result and I absolutely love it. I love this bodice applique so much. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. Um, if it was, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. All right, until next time.